husband. No, oh, no. You what? <laughs> uh, I don't want to cook tonight. Oh, I'm tired of cooking too. Let's go out to eat. <laughs> Have you said this or any of these before? Well, you're not alone. And we obviously said them too. But <laughs> These thoughts are expensive. That's why we're sharing our number one best food hack today as part of our 2021 Live Fabulously, Not Fabulously Broke campaign. You're listening to Queer Money episode 250. Oh my word, 250 episodes. We've been doing this for almost five years. We're old. So we make the Queer Money podcast for you. So please email your money questions to questions at debtfreeguys.com or post them in the Queer Money Facebook group and we may answer it in an upcoming episode. Exactly. There's personal finance for the masses. This is not personal finance for the masses. This is Queer Money. This podcast is sponsored by Capital One. Capital One is redesigning the banking experience by offering simple, straightforward, and seamless ways for you to bank from almost anywhere. So banking fits into your life, not the other way around. Queer Money is being brought to you in part by the five building blocks of a happy gay life. Join the growing community of happy, healthy, and wealthy gay men who love their lives inside and out. Get your free copy of the five building blocks of a happy gay life at debtfreeguys.com forward slash happy. So way back in your, <laughs> when we were amassing $51,000 in credit card debt, we would make the diabolical mistake some weeks of spending $400 a week at the grocery store and $400 a week dining out. That is ridiculous. And I'm very confused. I've never been able to understand this because we have never been skinnier. <laughs> right. Exactly. But that's it's- a whole other Queer money. <laughs> well, and the other crazy thing is, is that when you look at it, the average American family of four, I think that the kids here got to be a little bit younger, right? But they the can. average American family of four is spending anywhere from about two hundred and fifty to four hundred dollars a week on their food budget. Yeah. And so, in some cases, in some of these weeks, we were spending two to three times what the average family is spending. That is ridiculous. Really, really ridiculous. And I'm wondering to what extent that includes uh, feeding the family pet. (laughs) (laughs) Dogs need to eat too. That's true. So we weren't very conscious with our spending way back in your, and um, that clearly when we did our spending analysis that we've talked about several times that really highlighted how egregious some of our spending was in these categories. And so uh, we're going to share with you one our best food hack today for reducing our budget on the food category and also reducing our waistline. Yeah. Before we dive into this, we want to discuss that a lot of people have an aversion to this strategy because I don't like leftovers, they'll say. (laughs) But every single prepared meal that you get, not everything that you get for takeout, but every single prepared meal you get is a leftover. And we know that food prep services are skyrocketing right now. You can't go a week without getting some new food prep delivery service in your mailbox advertising the amazing food they can cook you at a low discount and save you a bunch of time. Right. Well, well, all we, that is a leftover. What, right. When you think about it, even if when you go into Whole Foods and you you see that that case of all the food, right? So delicious. All of that is really a leftover, right? If you, I don't know if you've ever been at Whole Foods around closing time. They take those big trays of food and they put a cover over it and then they put it in the freezer or I mean, not in the freezer, more often than not, it's in the fridge and they bring it back out and put it out again the next day if the majority of not all of it is gone. It, if you go into the freezer aisle, everything that you see in the freezer aisle, that is a leftover. It has been prepared. Even when you're buying pasta sauce, pasta sauce is a leftover. It was cooked before. Now you're having it now. I mean, you, you're not preparing it fresh every single time, right? So You're not Sophia Petrillo. Right. A lot of us forget that there is a lot, even when you go out to eat, like a lot of times desserts are leftovers. They're actually prepared somewhere else and they're put into a, a freezer case or they're put into a fridge and they sit there for a while before you actually they actually serve them. I know this from working in restaurants, right? And so a lot of us unconsciously eat leftovers, but we don't think that they're leftovers. Exactly. So we got to break that mental challenge that a lot of us have and understand that we're constantly eating leftovers, so um, so get over it. <laughs> so what is this monumentally life-changing food hack that we're sharing with you today? Well, it's our cooking once, eating many strategy. It's 
batching your food. Um, we didn't really understand this concept until we got really strategic and methodical with paying off our debt. And a big component for how we were able to save money that we could then put towards paying off our debt more quickly um, was actually getting a handle on our grocery shopping So in our, in our food budget. So um, we're going to share with you the four benefits of cooking once, eating many. And the first, obviously, since the whole point of this podcast is about money. The first uh, benefit is that it saves a ton of money. It does. You know, it was interesting. I think when we were at those weeks, when we were at our worst, what, what we would do, and I'm sure you've probably have done this too, is you have either a baller weekend or a Sunday fun day, or you know, maybe you just have a really bad Monday, right? And so you don't want to go home uh, and find out what's at home. So you stop at the store on the way home and you meander up and down the aisles, throwing a couple of things in your basket. And then you finally decide, oh yeah, let's, I'm going to, I'm going to have this for dinner. Right. And then you get all the stuff for that particular meal. Right. So then you walk out of the grocery store, having spent anywhere from about 50 to a hundred dollars to prepare dinner for tonight and all these kind of other things that ended up in your basket. Cause we know when we go to the grocery store, we rarely buy just what we're supposed to be there for. So that's how we would do this. We would shop like this over and over and over again. A couple of times a week sometimes. Right. And, and more often than not, we would have all of these half prepared things in the fridge or half used containers of things in the cabinet. And we had no clue what was in there when we were on our way home from work or when we were thinking about food earlier in the day, right? We were only thinking about the here and now. And that is the oftentimes the reason why many of us then just default to doing takeout. I mean, even if you just do takeout for two people and you stop at a quick casual place, because but we know that we don't do that all the time, right? <laughs> but if you just stop at a quick casual place and the two of you spend 30 bucks, not that bad, right? Not a big deal. Whether it's for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you spend $30, not a big deal, right? Well, if you as a couple just do that three times a week, that's going to be $400 plus a month, $5,000 a year. Do it twice that many times. Maybe you do breakfast, lunch, and dinner each twice during the week out. Well, that's $800 a month. $10,000 a year. How much time do you have to spend to earn five or $10,000 a year? I think that's one of the ways to look at it. Right, is what's how, your trade-off in time? Right. How, long, how many hours are you sitting behind your desk? How many hours are you out in the field with whatever it is that you do for work? How many sales do you have to make? How many calls do you have to do to take to be able to earn that kind of money is the trade-off. Now, I will say sometimes, absolutely, the trade-off is worth it. But is it worth it with the frequency that many of us have kind of gotten accustomed to? Right. And with a smarter, simpler strategy in the kitchen, you can actually reduce that amount of working for someone else, really. I mean, look, if we could save you five or 10 years of your life from working for somebody else and start retirement earlier, wouldn't you love it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, benefit number two with cooking once, eating many is uh, saving time. And that's something you really can't put a price on. Even though it's an investment of time, the actual period of time that you're doing your batched cooking, it actually net saves you money over the long run. For example, last night, I spent about an hour or so cooking whole grain rice, making a, a vegetable and creating a, a chicken dish that was simultaneously or not simultaneously, the combination of seared on the stove and, and baked in the oven. And that ultimately made uh, four dinners for us or eight meals for us. and. You know, while I invested that hour or so, maybe a little bit more, and that was more of an investment of time than what people would like to put in on a Sunday night, I was able to, we're now able to use that food over the next couple of weeks. And literally, other than making a vegetable, if one's not already made for us, it's going to take us about two to three minutes to scoop all that stuff onto a plate, put it in the microwave, and we're sitting down and eating. So that net, it saves us a ton of time. Well, and sometimes it's it's the exact same amount of time. So like today for lunch, I made salads with seared tuna, right? It takes the same amount of time to sear one piece of tuna or three pieces of tuna. 
made all three. It takes the same amount of time to chop and prepare all of the vegetables for one salad or two salads versus six salads. So what did I do? I just created a whole batch, right? We now have two extra salads for each of us sitting in the fridge and two pieces of seared tuna. It's the same amount of time. Literally, it's going to take us two minutes to put the dressing and put all that stuff together and have a salad. It's less time than it would take us to go out to get, eat to get that same kind of salad. So I'm actually using the same amount of time to make three times the amount of food rather than using three times the amount of time to make one meal each time. And I find that this strategy actually makes it easier for us to eat at home than it is to go out because the food's not made at the time and you're, and you're hungry at that particular moment, or you're too tired at that particular moment to, to, to cook something going out to eat or having something delivered is just seemingly the easier path. But if you've already got the food prepared and all you have to do is either throw it together or nuke it real quick, that's actually the easier, easier path. And so you're saving time and you're saving yourself some money. So win-win, but there are are two other benefits that we're going to share with you. And now a quick word from our sponsor. Capital One's checking and savings accounts have no fees and no minimums. And with one of the best saving rates in America, you can rest easy watching your money grow with no fees to bring you down. You can open an account in about five minutes, which means you are only about five minutes away from getting your savings to grow with one of the nation's best rates. Benefit number three is that net, you're actually eating healthier week after week, all week long. I know that when we're in those weak moments and we decide that we're going to go out to eat, we're not always choosing the healthiest options. <laughs> even, if you, even, even if you go to Chipotle, <laughs> right. and you, and which is predominantly healthier f- or fresher food, that gut bomb burrito <laughs> still has a lot of calories. Yeah, and I know that every now and then we say we're going to get the burrito and take half of it home but we don't. right? Yeah. <laughs> or we eat more than half of it. And then it just seems like, well, that quarter just right. seems stupid to then, save. Then we waste it. Right? Or, and we throw it away. Or, or Yeah, exactly. So it's healthier and it helps you eat healthier meals throughout the week if you're cooking once, eating many. And then not only is that provide a near-term benefit, but also long-term benefits because that lifetime of healthier eating is actually reducing your healthcare costs. So that's saving more money for you down the road. Yeah. Number four here is it actually increases the variety of your meals. Some people think when they do, they think about meal prep or batch cooking, I'm going to have to eat the same thing over and over and over again. Who talks like that? <laughs> right? <laughs> people who are complaining about having to eat the same thing over and over sure and over again. I talk like that. <laughs> right. But the reality is, is you don't have to. Last week, I made a double batch of 10 bean soup that in total made 12 meals for us two servings per meal, right? So a total of 24 servings. We have half of that, or actually more than half of it, sitting in the freezer right now. We're going to spread that over three weeks, which means that we will each have four servings of that during the week, two dinners and two lunches, right? That's not that bad of a variety of having to eat the same thing four times. And you think about, you have probably seven dinners and seven lunches, right? So 14, less than a third of them are going to be the same thing. You do that a couple of times and you've saved yourself a ton of time and a ton of money. And you have a ton of variety. I love it. So we did a Queer Money Facebook poll and we asked folks in the Queer Money Facebook group, who in here batches their cooking to save time and money. And uh, we had 10 respondents and 100% of those respondents said that they do that. But then more interestingly, we had several comments. Abel said that he and his partner shop at Costco a lot. Whenever they have their warehouse savings deals at Costco, it changes each month on what items are discounted. He said, we'll try to pile on items that we use until the next savings deal. So coffee, snacks, etc. works wonders for both home supplies as well as food. Right. So there's not only batch cooking, but it looks like he's batch shopping. Batch shopping. Right? And we've kind of gotten in the habit of this. We now only go grocery shopping every two weeks uh, for the most part. Sometimes it's even longer than that between shopping trips. And that also reduces the amount of money that you spend because you know, every time you go to the grocery store, it's it's tempting. You, you, <laughs> Extra bar chocolate sneaks in. That, that checkout counter is, <laughs> Bag is a of doozy. popcorn. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ken says here, produce markets are your best friend. He said, when we switched our diet to a mostly plant-based diet, we cut our weekly grocery bill by about 60 to $70 
per week when we went from a family of two spending about $100 or more weekly on groceries to now spending $35 to $40 weekly and they're eating healthier too. Who doesn't love that? I love that. Allison said, we make a list and we work, we work hard to stick to it. We're also focusing on looking at getting a small chest freezer so that they can do uh, bulk buying as well as bulk freezing of prepared food. So that's awesome too. I love it. Here are a couple of tools that we like to use and we suggest uh, you consider getting if uh, you want to implement the cooking once, eating many strategy. Our number one favorite tool and one that we don't have right now and we need to replace <laughs> quickly is our crock pot. Yeah. Crock pots. A lot of times I think people think of like crock pots for soup and things like that, but there's so many other things that you can make in crock pots. One of the things that we used to love to do, we haven't done in a while since we don't have a crock pot right now is we would get a huge batch of ribs and then just throw in a whole bunch of barbecue sauce, mm -hmm. let them cook for a couple of hours while we were working or when we were at work and come home or whole house smelled like barbecue sauce, mm -hmm. which is it was really bad if you're trying to not eat a lot, but it's a great way to cook. There's a whole variety of things that you can cook in crock pots. There's also all sorts of other pressure cookers and the air fryers and all these additional tools that are very similar to crock pots that allow you to cook a larger quantity and sometimes even save time in the way you cook them. Exactly. And there's a whole host of information online for healthy recipes for the crock pot, healthy recipes for a pressure cooker. So get yourself a crock pot, look up some of those recipes and back. Batch. Yep. Next one is large stock pots. This is great for making soups. I love to make soups. As I mentioned, making big batches of soup is so easy to, th to throw into small containers that you can put into the freezer that are a single serving, or maybe you put it into a serving a container that serves you know, maybe the whole week's worth and you just throw it in there and then you pull it out once a week or pull it out. You have several of those and you pull them out and once a week you have six servings. Exactly. Our third recommendation is uh, for uh, packaging and, and storing. Uh, we love our glass containers. You get the glass containers with the plastic lid. One of the best parts about that is that not only does it keep your food fresh, but it also makes it easier to see what the food is that's in there. Because sometimes that mystery food is, is <laughs> hard to identify. <laughs> yeah. um, we also love Tupperware. Uh, we know that a lot of people have an aversion to plastic, but if you are going to get plastic, Make sure you get something that's quality so that it lasts longer and you can get more life out of that. Yeah. And then we also love, weirdly enough, when we do get takeout <laughs> or, or every time you go to the grocery store, it's hard to, to, to leave without getting some sort of plastic container. So reduce, reuse, recycle, get more life out of each of those plastic containers. Uh, we have a ton of uh, yogurt containers in there right now. Uh, it does seem that, um, I don't know why this is the case, but very often when we get takeout from Asian restaurants, the clear plastic containers that they provide, um, they last a long time and they're also pretty good with uh, not leaking. So you can put soups and other things in there and not be so concerned about whether or not you're going to get to work with a wet, gross, a wet uh, lunch bag. <laughs> right. The other one is large Pyrex dishes. Uh, these are Pyrex glass dishes that you can put into the oven and bake in. They're great for making things like frittatas for breakfast. Uh, they're great for making lasagnas, things like that, that again, you can make large quantities put into the fridge, cut up into pieces, and then single serve them and pop in them in the, in the microwave. The, the nice thing is that a lot of those Pyrex dishes come with a plastic lid so that they are protected. They're protecting the food and you don't have to use tinfoil or uh, saran wrap or something like that. You're not, not using a lot of single serving or single use plastics. We also love specific meals. I love to make things like chilies and soups. Those are batch one, ones that I can batch in big quantities, as I mentioned before, throwing half of or two thirds of it in the freezer for us to have the next week or two weeks or even three weeks out. Exactly. Uh, and a popular a favorite of ours right now is Mujadara. I think we're saying that right. Uh, we've gotten on a Mediterranean diet kick, and that is one of the dishes that we both really like. Uh, it's a vegetarian dish made of either brown or uh, green lentils. It's Not only is it delicious, but it's filling and it stores very nicely in your refrigerator as well as your freezer if you want. Right. And then one other one, which is one you don't even have to cook yourself, is to buy a rotisserie chicken at the store. Oftentimes you're looking at six to eight dollars for these rotisserie chickens. And we can break ours sometimes into four or six servings. So we can have two to three meals, add that with a couple of vegetables that you get in the, from the freezer case, and boom, you have a whole meal that's ready in about five minutes. Exactly. How does your bank support the LGBT community? Not at all. 
for Pride in June, or 365 days a year. Capital One proudly supports the LGBT community throughout the year. Maybe it's time to support a bank that supports us. Go to debtfreeguys.com forward slash cafe for more info. Join our movement to build a community of happier, healthier, and wealthier gay men by getting your free copy of the five building blocks of a happy gay life at debtfreeguys.com forward slash happy. So thank you for listening to another episode of Queer Money. Here's your Queer Money takeaway from this episode. Start batching your meal prep and packaging (laughs) your meals. They'll be the best prepared food you've ever had (laughs) for your budget as well as your waistline. (laughs) Who doesn't love that, especially as we're heading into summer? We make the Queer Money podcast for you, so please email your money questions to questions at deadfreeguys.com or post them in the Queer Money Facebook group. We may answer your question in an upcoming episode. Thank you, and we will see you next week.